Tiny Tina's Wonderlands is here, and if you're exploring bunkers and badasses as the Fate Maker, then let's go through some critical tips and tricks to get you going. Hey, this video was brought to you by my editor, Shotgun Mick Payne. Go and follow him on Twitter. Actually, don't. He already has more followers than me, but he's been doing great work lately, and I just wanted to shout him out in a video, so... Well done, buddy. I'm going to have a separate video talking about all of the different classes, their strengths and weaknesses, and which one you should pick. But at a shorthand, there are six classes. Three lean to be more melee focused, the Berserker, the Clawbringer, and the Stabomancer. And their three leaned range, which is the Graveborn, the Spellshot, and the Spore Warden. At a certain point, you will be able to pick a secondary class, which can then later be changed once you've beaten the game. The only decision you are permanently locked into is your primary class. After picking a class, you will then choose a background. And this background will increase or decrease the total amount of hero points that you can put into a particular attribute. So if you're a village idiot, just like me, your strength total will be 38 rather than 30 and your intelligence will be 27 rather than 30. You will then have to allocate your hero points into attributes. And as you level up, you do gain more hero points. You can increase with them from these starting values, but from this starting screen, you will pick between strength, which increases your crit damage, dexterity, which increases your crit chance, intelligence, which increases your spell cooldown, wisdom, which increases your status damage, constitution, increases your max HP and your your ward HP, which is your shields in Wonderlands, and Attunement, which increases your skill cooldown. The choice here is really up to you and what kind of build that you're going for, but you can never go wrong with increasing your critical damage or your crit chance if you're not sure what to pick, and that's strength and dexterity. I would also make sure that you have removed the negative effect from your chosen background. So say for the Village Idiot example, it lowers our intelligence, so you want to get that back to 10, so you're not actually in the negatives there. Overworld tips. And the biggest addition in Tiny Tina's Wonderlands compared to Borderlands is the overworld. And in this area, you'll travel from like a top-down view and you can unlock different areas, complete overworld quests, and unlock permanent buffs to your character by completing shrines. Shrines are located all throughout the overworld and can be completed by doing their required mini dungeons or encounters. Tina will tell you when you arrive at a location that has a shrine piece so you can enter there and do the encounters to get the piece at the end. If you collect all of the pieces, you will then unlock the permanent buff. And there are collectibles found throughout the Wonderlands as well, which will give you additional permanent buffs if you collect them all. You can view your stats on the skill screen as well as your permanent buffs that you have unlocked on the journal screen. While you're on the journal screen, it's also worth mentioning that it can get very cluttered, so make sure you are sorting it based on the location of these crests rather than just having the big list. Major side quests will have a slightly different icon rather than a standard side quest. A standard side quest is just the exclamation mark, whereas a major side quest will have an exclamation mark with like a little shield or something behind it. You can fast travel back to the main town of Brighthood from like almost anywhere. If you do this, the portal in the middle of the town will take you exactly back to wherever you left from. So if you just want to go back to town to check something or do something, you can do that and then use the portal to travel back rather than having to actually walk back to that location. As you complete the main story quest, you will unlock different ways to traverse the overworld. So if you see a locked door or there's a lucky dice that you can't actually reach yet, make sure you make a mental note of it and come back to it later once you have unlocked the ability to go there and access it. Let's talk looting and shooting, the main thing that you'll be doing in the Wonderlands. And the first tip for you is to don't buy equipment. You'll get plenty of equipment. They are going to throw guns at you like you wouldn't believe. So don't buy anything in the early stages. Save that money for something that we'll talk about in a second. Encounters are a great way to get lots of gear quickly in the beginning. They're mostly greens, but at the start, it's better than anything. So you can just farm encounters to get some gear and try out different pieces of equipment in the early stages. If you're looking to level up quickly, side quests are the best way to gain a large chunk of experience very rapidly. You can usually get a decent item at the end by completing a side quest as well. So you can do this. You'll often get about like one level per side quest. So it's worth doing them. Lucky dice increase your chance of finding higher quality loot. The more dice you collect, the higher the chance is, but they will also drop loot when you do roll them. So make sure you're finding them, hunting them out, rolling them, getting the loot drops, and you can be find them in the overworld as well. As you level up, you gain hero points and skill points. The skill points are used in the traditional Borderlands way of picking various skills for your class, but the hero points will allow you to buff your attributes that we were talking about earlier, so you can increase them to certain levels and get the various buffs from them. Where you should be spending your gold is on the storage SDUs at the blacksmith. I completely forgot about this until like level 20, but basically you can go here and increase your storage limits for all of the ammo types, your backpack, everything in between, as well as the lost loot machine, which can be found in the tavern. And what this does is it will gather all of the higher quality loot that drops that you don't actually pick up and store it here. And the bigger the storage space is, then you have a less chance of actually missing things. Say if it falls off a cliff or you just don't actually see it and you just run by it, it'll go into this storage thing and you can just go back to the town, click this machine and it'll all pop out for you. 
once you have finished the story, you'll also unlock the ability to re-roll enchantments on your different gear. Some weapons will have enchantments and these are additional bonus effects on top of what they can already do. And once you've unlocked this re-roll feature, you'll actually be able to add enchantments to weapons as well by just re-rolling it using this machine. You can add enchantments to your favorite weapons that may not actually have one. Combat tips. Now, firstly, don't kill the ads in boss fights. Unless they're actually causing you grief and causing you issues, don't kill them. They're basically there so that if you do go down, you can kill them to get that death save to bring yourself back up. This is very valuable for solo play, which I myself am primarily a solo player. So this is basically the only way that I get revived is by doing the death saves. Encounters contain traps that can harm or kill you, but they can also hurt your enemies. So set up shop near a trap, lead your enemies through it and just reap the benefits of having them going, running through them and dealing damage rather than you having to do it yourself. There are many different weapons to find in the Wonderlands and most weapons will have an elemental type of damage. These elements do additional or less damage to certain enemies and certain types of enemies and will also do less or more damage to certain colors of health bars. You can check all the specifics by inspecting an item and going into the details but at a shorthand I'll break it all down for you here. So fire damage does increase damage to flesh or the red health bars and can also set enemies on fire. Electric or lightning does extra damage to wards or shields and which are the blue health bars and they can electrocute enemies which can then pass to different enemies. Poison damage does extra damage to armor or yellow health bars and can poison the enemy. Ice slows enemies and does extra damage to bone or gray health bars. Dark magic or leech is the new elemental type and this does less damage overall to all of the different health bar types but it does zap the enemy's health and restore your own. Having one of these weapons available as a backup is always valuable especially as a solo player so you can get some quick health back in a pinch. Legendary weapons and other weapons will also do different effects like I found a legendary weapon that shoots wyverns when you reload and there will be all kinds of things to play around with so if you find a weapon that's interesting just pick it up use it for two minutes see if it's good or not there is always value in trying to try different things rather than just sticking to whatever you have found that works don't forget about your spell slot as well which is a vital part of this game it kind of acts as like a second skill it replaces the grenades from borderlands but it's much more valuable in that there are spell slots that can do tons of different things so you could have a flamethrower out of your hand you could throw ice picks you could spawn different companions that will last a certain amount of time from them there's all sorts of effects you can have from the spell so make sure you're reading the description seeing what they do seeing what they buff or don't buff and using them and testing them out from there this is a little bit of a personal thing but i like to destroy all of the explosive barrels before i actually get close to them because i am just terrible at blowing them up in my face and killing myself so if you're just like me make sure you blow them up before you get too close and it's also worth noting that you can actually apply status effects to the ground as well so say if you're shooting ice at water you can actually freeze that water which will do ice damage to enemies and yourself if you are standing in it so be mindful of that you can also electrocute the water and other effects like that so just be careful what you're standing in as a lot of the damage you will take you won't actually know where it's coming from and it's probably from your feet also you should check out my review for tiny tina's wonderlands if you're not sure about picking up this game or if you just want to know what my opinions are of the game as a whole thank you for watching this video till the end thank you to our members for supporting the channel my name is norza and i hope you have a great day